Got him. Is that a good one? Can't really tell. Number one though. Nope, not a big one. What's up y'all? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Here today on Grand Lake in Oklahoma on a really cold November day. It's actually the first day of November. Water temperatures right now are 55 degrees. Air temperatures this morning were 25 degrees. I was scraping ice off my truck and got my first fish of the day here within the first 15 minutes. Just on a little flat sided crankbait down some riprap. So I'm gonna hopefully figure out how to catch a few fish today, show you how I deal with these really cold front conditions in the fall. So let's put this guy back and get another one. There we go, beautiful fish. So all I'm doing here guys is just throwing a flat side crankbait. This is the new David Fritz flat side crankbait that just came out. I love flat side crankbait, especially when it gets cold. Bar temperature is 55, 56 degrees and basically just cranking down this riprap just to start the day off. I kind of wanted to start here just because riprap has the rock and usually that's gonna hold a lot more heat. And yesterday we had a lot of sun, which was good, which warmed up the water a little bit, even though air temperatures were 40 degrees. But the days before that it rained, a cold rain two days in a row. So the water's actually up like a foot. It's already been up like two feet all year on Grand. So we're dealing with rising water, cold water, probably muddy water. Not the best conditions to be fishing. So hopefully you guys will be able to learn something today. Hopefully I learned something today, put some fish in the boat. So when I got to Grand Lake this morning, I had no idea what the fish were doing. I hadn't been to Grand Lake in over a month and I'd only fished out in Grand Lake in the fall a couple times. And I decided before I got to the lake that I wanted to fish shallow. And so when I try to fish down the banks in the fall, my usual approach is to just pick a random pocket close to the boat ramp. And I start in the mouth of the pocket and I'll fish all the way to the back. And I basically am just looking for a clue as to what the fish are doing in the form of one bite. And so I'll fish from the mouth of the pocket all the way to the back to see if the fish are positioned in any uh, point in this pocket. And I'm also looking for bait fish. I wanna look at the water clarity, water temperature, things like that. And a lot of times I'll pull up into a pocket like this and get no bites. But sometimes when you pull into these pockets, you'll actually start getting bit right away and it'll give you a clue as to where you need to go the rest of the day. Got him. Is that a good one? I can't tell. Not a bad one. Spinner bait. That's what I'm talking about. Getting back here behind some of these boat docks. If you had spinner bait way up there, there's a really nice, oh, let me get off of here. Oh, there we go. There's a really nice rocky outcrop over there that I was looking at and you couldn't get to it by normal means. You kind of have to sneak behind some of these docks and that's something you have to do a lot on Grand Lake. A lot of these lakes have a lot of docks like the Ozarks, places like that. You have to try to find places that other guys are gonna skip over. They might not wanna sneak into this little crack here and try to cast at the outcrop. And so a lot of times, if you take a little bit of time to sneak back in some areas where fewer people are fishing, it can pay off a lot. So that's number two, that's actually a keeper. The first one wasn't. Just got that one on a little double willow leaf spinner bait. And so spinner baits are really big on Grand Lake and that might be the deal. That fish was really shallow. Okay, let's let this guy back close to where he was at so he can get back over there and uh, oh man that's awesome so you see I still have gloves on because it's really cold but I made repeated casts back into this little area because again it's kind of tough to get to you can't get to it from either side on the right or the left this is the only place you can access it from and so really what I'm trying to do is just not hit anything and make my cast all the way up there. And, you know, I wanted to throw a crankbait potentially up on those rocks, but if I get hung up, I'm losing my crankbait. So the spinner bait's a really good option as well. And those fish were super, or that fish was super shallow, right on top of those rocks. And he drilled that spinner bait. So I'm liking what I'm seeing there. And I'm gonna make a few more repeated casts in this area just to see if some fish are up there. Oh man, that's awesome. Two fish really quick and I actually made a change from a double Colorado spinnerbait that's sartreuse because I thought I was gonna be fishing in pretty dirty water. We're kinda back here in the creek, water's rising. I thought it might be a little bit muddy, but we still have a good two feet of visibility back in this area. And so what I did right away is change up from the double Colorado 
yellow spinnerbait or sarchu spinnerbait to a double willow leaf spinnerbait. And the double willow leaf will throw off a lot more flash. I can fish it a little bit quicker. And when you have that little bit clearer water, usually a double willow leaf spinnerbait is going to be a little bit better option. I can also fish it just a little bit deeper on these colder conditions. And so both of these I have rigged up with a little swim bait trailer and have a trailer hook on both of them for sure, especially in these cold front conditions. But that's what I'm going with so far. And I think that change definitely made a difference. And so hopefully you'll be able to roll with this get some more fish in the boat. So it looks like I picked a pretty decent spot to start. I had two fish in the boat within 30 minutes and I got that one bite on the spinnerbait pretty shallow and so I just kept fishing down the banks back behind boat docks and just trying to get my bait in places where I feel like other fishermen weren't fishing and so sometimes that means actually sneaking into the boat stalls like I'm doing here firing that spinner bait around and again I'm just trying to cover water and try to feel out where the fish are in these pockets are they in the mouth of the pockets the back of the pockets are the fish even really that stacked up in this creek or do I need to completely change areas and so again just looking for a clue to jump start my day Okay guys, so I'm just making my way back into one of these shallow pockets here. And as you can see, there's a lot of boat docks and some of them have wires that are actually connecting the boat dock to the shore and just a lot of obstacles to get around. And a lot of times guys think about skipping jigs underneath boat docks, maybe a wacky worm. But one thing I do a lot, especially out here on Grand Lake is skip a spinnerbait. And you might think, can, can you really skip a spinnerbait? Well, if you take a look, I can skip that bait straight underneath those docks along the walkways all of the cables and I'll show some images here of me doing it earlier too and basically the reason I can do that is because I have that swim bait trailer on the spinner bait and so if you put a swim bait trailer on your spinner bait and you're throwing a kind of light spinner bait anywhere from a three eighths to a half ounce spinner bait you can't really do it that well with a one ounce or maybe a three quarter ounce spinner bait it's also tougher if you have a big Colorado blade on there if you just have some double willow leaf blades and then put that swim bait trailer on the back a lot of times you can skip that bait underneath boat docks around boat docks and get a lot of extra bites and so I know a lot of guys think about skipping jigs and even skipping buzz baits but if you can skip a buzz bait you can definitely skip a spinner bait as well so just something to think about got him Is that a good one oh yeah Back in the back of this pocket on that spinner bait again. That's a nice one right there. It's a solid keeper on that spinner bait. Oh man, look at that. Just got the trailer hook on that spinner bait. Barely nipped at that thing. That's why I always put a trailer hook on my spinner baits, guys. But that's a solid two pounder right there. Just in the back of this little pocket and uh, just chunking that spinner bait. This is just a classic way to catch them on Grand Lake, especially when that water temperature is dipping to the 60s. 50s maybe even the high 40s and so this is a pretty classic way to catch them you can actually see this fish has already been caught right there and so this is kind of almost like retread someone probably called this fish because he's not that big but uh let's put this guy back and see if we can't catch another one. Oh, there we go so got that guy again just fishing the spinnerbait down just these kind of sloping banks there's some mud mixed with some rock it's no, nothing really that special this is just kind of how guys catch them on Grand Lake really what they'll do is just take a spinner bait or crank bait really just a spinner bait and just roll down the bank and so this is a classic way to catch them everyone knows how to do this this is what people do on Grand Lake and so I'm kind of interested to see how I do today just fishing a spinner bait down the bank and if I can catch some really good fish and maybe if I can catch better fish by fishing some stuff maybe away from the bank, some offshore stuff, or just some hidden stuff that maybe isn't that deep, but is still a little bit off the bank. And so over the next few months, I really want to start fishing a lot on Grand Lake and figuring out what is the best way to put big fish in the boat, the tournament winning fish. And so I want to start today with just, I guess, a basic pattern, which is throwing a spinnerbait down the bank, what everyone does, see what the results are, and then compare it over the next few months to some other stuff that I might try. And I might zero some days, I might not catch any fish experimenting. I might find that throwing a spinnerbait down the bank is the best thing to do, but I definitely feel like there's a better way to catch them than just kind of, I, I don't know, repeating what everyone else on the entire lake does. But for right now, I am having a blast catching these fish on the spinnerbait. The spinnerbait bite is really fun. And so I'm just going to keep doing this because, you know, why not? Oh, there's another one. That's what I'm talking about. See? Just throw a spinnerbait down the bank. 
you catch fish. Grand Lake, that's what I'm talking about. Another fish right here, literally two casts later. Not big ones, nothing huge, but I know on Grand Lake, you'll go catch a lot of fish like this, and all of a sudden, a four pounder will show up. And so, caught some fish in the mouth this pocket, caught some fish way back in this pocket. So I'm not really sure if there is a rhyme or reason to that. All the fish though seem like they're coming off some sort of rock. As you can see right here, we have a little rock outcropping. First two fish caught, came off rock, and there's a little rock stair step right here where the other fish came off of. So all these fish have come off a rock. And so usually when you're fishing on a lake, when you catch them up shallow, even if it doesn't seem like the fish are related to a certain section of a creek or anything in particular, a lot of times it's a certain type of bank, a certain slope to the bank, a certain type of rock on the bank, and that's what those fish are gonna hold to. And so I'm gonna stick with the spinner bait like I mentioned earlier and uh, see if I can't run some more rocky areas, put some more fish in the boat, hopefully some bigger ones, maybe change up bait or something too to put some bigger fish in the boat. So after I caught those two fish in the back of that pocket, I fished my way out of that pocket and didn't get any more bites. And so because I was pretty successful just fishing through the entirety of the pocket, I wanted to duplicate that in the same creek I was in. So I just ran about maybe half a mile up the lake to the next little pocket I could find. And immediately when I got there, I realized that a few things were different. First, the water clarity was a lot different. There was actually a lot dirtier water where I went to, and it was also a lot colder. So the water temperatures were between 56 to 58 degrees where I started, and the next spot I went to, water temperatures were between 53 and 54 degrees. And so this change in water temperature plus a little bit dirtier water resulted in a pretty unproductive area. And I spent about an hour, hour and 15 minutes fishing the back of this creek, seeing if the water temperature would actually make a difference, because sometimes it doesn't. And maybe the dirtier water would hold bigger fish, but that definitely wasn't the case. And so what I decided to do was make my way back out towards the main lake and see if I could find some clear water there. And so as I made my way back to the main lake, I was trying to look for water that had similar clarity and similar temperature to where I started because that's where I caught my fish. And right away when I got out to the main lake, I realized that it was a lot dirtier than the creek I was fishing, probably again due to all the rain we were having. But I also found that the water temperature was a lot warmer by the main lake. It was like 58 to 59 degrees. And so to find some clear water, I decided to go into the back of some of these short pockets off the main lake. A lot of times if the main lake is really muddy, these little feeder pockets are going to be a little bit clearer. And that was actually the case. And so to figure out where the fish were, I basically started at the mouth of one of these pockets and fished my way all the way back to the back, just like I did with the first pocket. And I caught a few fish, a few smaller fish, nothing great, but I ran two or three pockets in a row to see if I could find one that had a concentration of fish and actually did in the back of one of the creeks here. Got him. There we go. Another one right there. The same size fish. This one just came out of a little patch of grass out here. Again, trailer hooks all it's got him. Another keeper, but another really small one compared to what I need to be catching. Decent fish right there. Just got that guy out of the edge of some of this flooded grass. The lake is still pretty high, and so there's definitely a lot of flood cover in the water and that fish was just on the edge of this grass and I mean this pocket right here just looked good had some shad kicking around it got another one there's definitely some fish around here seems like whenever I get around them I can catch two or three fish pretty easily I just I'm not getting any good size ones they're all this size which I mean these are fun fish don't get me wrong I'll catch these all day for fun but not in tournaments this is just limit fillers right here but still a nice fish it's a chunky one too so maybe this little shallow grass seal might be a deal i can run though maybe if i find the right stretch of shallow grass i can get some good ones nice fish right there but yeah just <laughs> parallel on the edge of this grass really with the spinner bait i mean this is not rocket science by any means uh, but it is kind of difficult to find this exact type of grass and so i need to Make sure I 
really scour the banks to, to find some of the stuff and both those last fish came on the outside edge of the grass they weren't back up in it so that kind of makes it a little bit easier but seems like if I can find shad with the grass I did get one other bite on grass earlier too with some shad and it seemed like a pretty decent one and so maybe this is something to run with I'm not really sure but we will keep trying it at least and see what happens. So after catching those fish on the spinner bait in the grass, I decided to look for more grass that was similar to the area I was just fishing. And I did fish a few stretches that looked okay. They weren't great, but as I was working my way down the bank, I saw a nice rocky outcropping and decided to throw a crankbait by it. Got him. Good one. There we go. Finally, there's a better one on the crankbait. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe I need to be throwing a crankbait instead of the, oh, he's peeing all over the place. I'll be throwing the crankbait instead of the uh, spinner bait. That dude chewed that bait. That's a better one. It's kind of the size I'm looking for. Let me get him a hook real quick. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. That one came out a little, Lucky Craft 2.5 crankbait and just off a little rocky levee right here. And that's about a two and a quarter, two and a half pounder, better sized fish. If I had five of these plus maybe a three or four pounder, I'd be pretty happy with my day. So that's my first good clue for the day. And you know, first fish I catch on the crankbait, I threw a crankbait literally 10 casts, got a two and a half pounder. And so that could be a deal. I'm not really sure yet. Really, I only fished one of these little rocky jetties, but I know several others just around the corner that could be really good. And so I might need to start fishing more of these rock areas with a square bill, stuff like that. That might help me get a few bigger bites. I don't know what the deal is with the spinner bait and getting the smaller bites, but it doesn't really bother me too much as long as I'm getting the bites. So crankbait it is, it seems like. Let's make a move and try to find some more areas to crank because that's a good sign. So after catching that fish on the square bill around that rocky outcropping, I wanted to try to duplicate that and see if it was a pattern that I could run around the lake. And so I knew of a couple more rocky outcropping just around the corner that I actually found on Google Earth while I was just searching around in the historical images. And Grand Lake has some photos when the lake is drawn down and you can see these little rocky points right here. And so I rolled over there and immediately I noticed that the water clarity and the water temperature were the exact same as the area where I just caught the fish on the spinnerbait and the crankbait and in the area where I started my day. And it seemed like whenever I would get in areas where I had about a foot and a half of water visibility and that 56 to 59 degree water, that's where the fish were holding. If I got into water that was too dirty, let's say a foot or less of visibility, or I got into water that was too cold, maybe 54, 55 degree water, those fish would not bite. But when I found that sweet spot with the foot and a half visibility, 58 degree water, that's where the fish were. And so this spot fit the bill and I rolled over to this rocky outcropping and actually caught a really good fish. Unfortunately, the audio on both my cameras corrupted, I don't know how, but I did catch a fish on the rocky outcropping, actually fishing a spinner bait because there was a little bit of grass up on top of it. And so this area had the rock and the grass and it produced a really good fish. And so I was pretty happy with this actually because I was able to duplicate the pattern and go from one spot to another and catch another good quality fish. And so in a tournament situation, I feel like I could run more of these rocky outcroppings and put more fish in the boat. Unfortunately though, I didn't have any more of these rocky outcroppings marked on my map. And so what I plan on doing is actually going back out to Grand Lake and looking specifically for these type of areas and also going onto Google Earth and doing some more map study. And I'm gonna make a video about that very soon here. They'll be coming up the next couple days on my channel. And I'll show you how I actually take the information I learned from this fishing day go back to my office in Google Earth and also in Avionics to find more spots there like it and then try to go catch some more fish. And this is something you might wanna do after a practice day or if you're just fun fishing a couple days in a row. So definitely going to enjoy showing you guys that process. Then we'll go back out to the lake, hopefully try to put it into practice and catch a bunch of fish. 
Okay guys, so on the call today, I had a blast on Grand Lake today catching them on the spinner bait and the crank bait. And I didn't catch any big ones today, but I caught a lot of nice fish. Probably had a limit for about 11 pounds. And so definitely not a bad day on the water. And I also have some ideas now on how I can go find some bigger fish. It was always good to get on a pattern where I'm catching fish to start off. And now I can kind of expand on that and hopefully put some bigger fish in the boat next time we're out here. So I'm gonna try to chronicle my entire journey out here on Grand Lake learning it and trying to catch some big fish out here so hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you'll tune into the next ones as well so thanks for checking out this video i'll see you all in the next one